tolerant and respectful of other people's rights if I haven't even got a right to my own name. <laughs> about this school, being called by your surname. Paul, what's the matter? Mm, them again. I wish my parents had never sent me to this place. It's horrible. Now look here. I'll go away and mind your own business. I should have known you'd be on their side. Is that fair? I may have been like that last year. You were horrible. But yes, you have changed. Everyone's noticed it. But that lot have got you marked down as their next victim. The you got. We can hide better there. Now! During the holidays, a lot of weird things happened to me. What kind of things? I think I can trust you. But it's the most terrific secret. Would you believe that I've been right outside this world? Our world. I don't even know what that means. In a place where animals can talk. And there are dragons and enchantments. How did you get there? The only way anyone can. By magic. I think I'm getting a bit old for magic. Oh, come off it. But I, I know what you mean. I was with my cousins. And they can't go back because they're too old. I certainly wish we could get away from here. Yeah, well, leave it down there. I don't know. He never said I couldn't go back. I'm sure if I really wanted to, he'd let me. Who? Eustace, what are you talking about? A certain someone. Someone called Asla. Asla? Asla. I wonder if we could get there. How? You mean draw a magic circle on the ground and stand in it? No. He'd just think that was rot. Just... pull him. Aslan. 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 Let's go! Come on! Come on, this way! Never is.
If you're thirsty, come and drink. Oh, I'm very thirsty. Could I... Would you mind going away while I drink? Oh, the sound of that water's driving me frantic. Will you promise not to do anything to me if I... I will make no promise. And you mean I'm to trust you? Do you eat girls? I have swallowed up girls, boys, women and men. Oh, dear. And I wouldn't dare drink. Then you will die of that. I won't. I'll find another stream. There is no other stream. I see. I have to trust you. The purest water I've ever tasted. Come here. and then floated away, sir. How did he come to do that, child? He was trying to stop me from falling, sir. And why were you so near the edge? I was showing off, sir. That is a very good answer. The boy is safe. I've blown him on the winds all the way to Narnia. But your task will be harder because of what you have done. I didn't know I had a task here. The task for which I called you and the boy out of your own world. Ah. Oh. Let us go together to the pool, human child. And I will tell you what your task is to be. Far from here is the land of Narnia, and in that land lives the aged king, Caspian. The king is sad because he has no prince of his blood to be king after him. He has no heir because his only son was stolen from him some years ago. No one in Narnia knows where that young prince went to, or even if he is still alive. But he is alive. Now I lay on you this command, that you seek this lost prince until either you have found him or died in the attempt. I've forgotten what he looks like already. I've never even been here before. How can I... I will tell you, child. These are the signs by which I will guide you in your quest. Without these signs, you can do nothing. So, remember them. First... As soon as the boy Eustace sets foot in Narnia, he will see an old and dear friend. To get help, he must greet that friend at once. Two. You must journey out of Narnia to the north, overcoming all hazards until you come to the ruined city of the ancient giants. Three. You shall find a writing on a stone in that ruined city and must do what the writing tells you to do. For if you ever find him, you will know the lost prince by this, that he will be the first person you have met in your travels 
who will ask you to do something in my name. In the name of Aslan. Oh, I see. Child, perhaps you do not see as well as you think. Repeat to me in order the four signs. Yes, well, um, first we go north to... No. First Eustace has to recognize his old friend. Then we go north, and then... Sit down. We will say these signs over and over until you get them right. One. As soon as Eustace sets foot in Narnia, he will see an old and dear friend. As soon as Eustace sets foot in Narnia, he will see an old and dear friend. Very good. And you must say the four signs to yourself every day, morning and night, to keep them alive in your memory. You know how you are to get to Narnia? As the boy Eustace did. But there's no hurry. If he sees someone, he knows he's bound to speak to them. There is no time to spare. You must go. Oh, I've made a terrible start here. I know I have. If I hadn't been showing off, Scrub wouldn't have fallen. And he'd have heard all the signs too. And then if I forgot them, he'd remember them. But now... Child! Silence! <clears throat> up again, have you? Keep quiet, I'm trying to listen. Oh, but there isn't a moment to lose. Don't you see some old friend of yours here because you've got to go and speak to him? What are you talking about? I've seen the lion, Aslan, and he says you've got to. Aslan, you've seen Aslan. He said the very first person you saw here in Narnia would be an old friend. But you've got to go and speak to him at once to get the help we need. There's nobody here I've ever known. I don't even know if this is Narnia. But I thought you said you'd been here. I have, but I've never seen this place. Now dry up and let's see what's happening.
are you two? My name's Scrub. This is Poe. Jill Poe. Would you mind telling us where we are? In the land of Narnia, at the King's Castle of Care Paravel. Is that the King who's just taken ship? Too true, too true. But who are you? There's something magic about you. I saw you arrive. You flew, you flew. You were sent by Aslan. Aslan! To woo, to woo! We've been sent to find the lost prince. First I've heard of it, what prince? You'd better speak to the Lord Regent. At once. To woo, to woo, what are to do? I can't think clearly yet. I never myself until the sun goes down. Oh. There's more. There's a lot more. Aslan gave me four signs to remember, and that was the first of them. You had to go straight to your old friend. But I tell there you... There he is. The Lord Regent, Trumpkin the Dwarf. And what is the king's name? Caspian of the Tenth. Whatever's the matter? He was my old friend. Then we've missed the first sign. Toe, toe, two strangers, my lord. Hey, what rangers? All I see is two uncommonly grubby mankles. What do they want? My name's Jill. Uh, the girl's called Jill. What? The girls are all killed? Who killed them? Nobody's been killed. Who? Oh? Nobody! All right, all right. There's no need to shout. You think I'm deaf? And why go to all this trouble to tell me nobody's been killed? Are they tell him I'm Eustace? My lord, the boy's Eustace. Well, if he's Eustace, we don't want him here. Eustace, Eustace! Used to it? Used to what? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I don't know. When I was a young dwarf, centres and badges, and I was really talked. None of this muttering and mumbling you get nowadays. Uh, I'm thinking more clearly now. I must be getting later. Uh, uh, don't mention the lost prince. I I'll explain later. Oh, that wouldn't do. It wouldn't do. What are to do? No, 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 Master Glimfeather. If you have anything sensible to say, take a deep breath, speak clearly and say it. My Lord Regent, these two children are from that other place, beyond the end of the world. They've been sent here by Aslan himself. Sent by Aslan? For what purpose? To visit the great court of Narnia. So, our fame spreads. Well, my dears, you're heartily welcome. And if my poor master, the good king, had not set sail this very hour for the Seven Isles, I'm sure he would have welcomed you both too. But it would have brought back his youth to him. Uh, ooh, ooh, I think it's supper time, don't you? Well, my dears, you can tell me your business in chamber tomorrow morning. Glimfeather, see that suitable bed chambers and clothing are provided for our honoured guests. Oh, and Glimfeather, see that they're properly washed. for words. Didn't feel like it. Aren't you hungry? I had something in my room. I wish we'd never come back to this place. But it's beautiful. It's terrible. I've forgotten all about Narnia time. Time here is different. However long we stay here, as soon as we go back to Earth, only a second will have gone by. We'll go back to things just the way they were. To those bullies. Wonderful. Oh, dry up. The point is, years and years, maybe 70 years have gone by here. And Caspian, who was young like us, is now an old man. He's had his whole life, and I'm still a child. Even if I had recognised him, I wouldn't have known what to have said to him. Oh, we've missed the first sign. 
Who will help us now? How will we even begin to find the lost prince? Oh, shut up. Anyway, what were the other signs? The second one was... Oh, dear. I know. Go to the north of Narnia. And the third one was... Uh... And the fourth was... Uh... I'm going to bed. Oh, you've got to remember those signs. I'll try. I'll concentrate. I will remember them. to do if you're in earnest about finding a prince. Oh, we've got to be. I wouldn't care to get on the wrong side of that lie. Then you must come with me tonight. I'll go and get the other human. You'd better put on something warm. I'll be back in two twos. Twoo! Where's Eustace? I've taken him and come back for you. Now get aboard. Get aboard what? Why me, of course. Holly, come along. Are you comfortable? Oh, yes, it's so smooth. <gasps> Don't do that! I nearly slid off. Sorry, just nothing about. Having had much supper, there's nothing more sustaining than a nice prop butt. Uh, shall I catch you one? No, thanks. Um, I'm being inquisitive. But where are we going? Aha! Uh -huh. That's not a place, aha. Uh -huh. Why won't you tell me? Why is everything so secret? You will know soon enough all you need to know. You are, you're not. For all I know, you could be kidnapping me. Nonsense. Really, there. Look out. Here, please. Oh, no. One thing in the whole sky, and you have to go straight at it. <coughs> Where are we going? 
That's not a place, aha. Why won't you tell me? Why is everything so secret? You will know soon enough all you need to know. You are? You're not? For all I know, you could be kidnapping me. Nonsense. Nearly there. Look out. Here, please. Oh, no! Only one thing in the whole sky, and you have to go straight at it! And this, my dear humans, is a special emergency meeting of the Great Parliament of Owls. Just a moment. There's something I want to say first. Well, time in our world is different. And though King Caspian the 10th is an old man, and I'm only a boy, he and I sailed together right to the eastern end of the world. That legendary voyage, uh, with Lord Trinian. And Reapercheap, and all of them. And you better know right away, I am loyal to Caspian. I am the king's man. And if this is a meeting to plot against him, I'll have none of it. <laughs> Bravely spoken, human boy. But in fact, we're here to talk about you two. What about us? It's simply that if the Lord Regent, Trunkin the Dwarf, hears you mean to look for the Lost Prince, he'll put you under lock and key. You mean Trumpkin's a traitor? Caspian always said he trusted him. Oh, no, Trumpkin's no traitor. But over the years, many of our champions have set out to look for the Lost Prince, and not one has ever come back. So the King has decreed not to have all his bravest Narnians destroyed in the search for his lost son. So now, nobody is allowed to go. But surely he'd let me go, once he knew who I was and who sent me. Who sent both of us. Ah, yes. The Parliament should know that these young humans were sent on this noble mission by the great Aslan himself. But the King's away on his last voyage, and Trumpkin would stick to the rules. He doesn't even take any notice of us. And everyone knows how wise we owls are. <laughs> But if we have to wait to persuade the king, how long is he going to be away? If only we knew. There is a rumour that Aslan has been seen in the islands. And the king wants to make one more attempt before he dies to see Aslan face to face. To ask his advice on who is to be king after him, now that he has lost his son. But if he goes searching for Aslan, surely... Exactly! There's no telling when he'll be back. But tell us about the lost prince. I think that had best come from our friend here who remembers all. A natural-born storyteller he is. He can plant the best pictures in your mind. Close your eyes. Some years ago, when Rillian, son of Caspian, was a young knight, he rode out with the queen, his mother, on a beautiful May morning. They took no hounds with them, for they were not hunting, but main. In the warm part of the day, they decided to rest in a pleasant glade. No one there knew of the terrible consequences that were to befall them. Some more wine, Mo. Indeed, sir. When Prince Rillian had reached his mother, one glance told him no physic in the world would do her good. The Queen was mourned by all, and 
Prince William took his mother's death very hard. Again and again he returned to the north to kill that vile serpent, but no sign of it did he find. After a month, there seemed to come over him a change, or so thought Caspian's great friend, Lord Grinian. Your Majesty, by my advice, you must stop riding out to seek that evil serpent. It is too dangerous a thing, sire, to do alone. But serpent? My good friend Drinian, I have not thought of the creature these seven days. Why go you to the woods, sire? Because I've seen there the most beautiful thing that was ever made. Prince, let me ride out with you tomorrow, that I too may see what this fair thing is. But my lord, why come so often to this of all places? You will see. and you frighten the lady away! Let us go, my lord, from this accursed place. Accursed no longer to me. Then came the fateful day when Prince Rillian returned again to that accursed glade. From that hour, no trace of William was ever found. Neither hat, nor cloak, nor anything else. William, you have searched for the prince for days. I fear I may never see my son again. Oh, my lord king, slay me speedily as a great traitor. For by my silence, I have destroyed your son. He has gone to the place of the Queen's destruction and has himself disappeared. I have lost my Queen and my son. Should I lose my friend too? The old king has lived in sadness ever since, for no one has ever discovered what happened to the young prince. Well, I bet the serpent and that woman were one and the same. But we don't think she killed the prince, for no bones were ever found. We know she didn't. Aslan himself told me the prince is still alive. But that almost makes it worse, for it means the evil woman must have some use for him, and surely some deep scheme against Narnia. Long, long ago, a white witch came out from the north and bound over our lands in snow and ice for a hundred years. This could be some of the same crew. Then Paul and I have got to find the prince. Can you help us? Any clue, you two? We have to go north until we reach the ruins of a giant city. Well, can you help? Oh, oh, the, oh dear, city of giants. Oh, very, very sorry and all that. I'm not at all uh, difficult, you know. Why north, uh, city of giants? Oh. You'd want to travel by day and we'd want to travel by night. It wouldn't do. Oh, it wouldn't don't do. Wouldn't do. Well, how do we start? <sighs> well, uh, if they must go that way, then at least we can take them as far as the mast wiggles. <sighs> They're the ones. They know the Northlands best. They're the only ones, the only ones who can help. Oh, come on then. I'll take one. 
well, as long as it's only as far as the mast ring, I'll take the other. Here, young human, don't rock the boat. They gave me the sword at Care Paravel, and I don't intend to travel without it. Scrub, you idiot, you'll fall off. Oh, no, I won't. I'm back in Narnia, and the air here. I've forgotten how good it is. I feel stronger every minute. Hold on, big ass, down we go. What a miserable place! Puzzleclam! Puzzleclam, my dear! Wake up! Puzzleclam! We are here on the lion's business! We come in the service of Aslan! To you! To you! To you! To you! Owls ahoy! What happened? Is the king dead? Has an enemy landed in Narnia? I know. It's a flood. Or maybe dragons. It's nothing of the sort. Come on here! <laughs> Likely, even if there isn't a thunderstorm or a flood, or the wigwam doesn't fall down on top of us all. Mm, ah well, just have to make the best of it. Place. At least it's dry and warm. It's a wigwam, like Red Indians live in. Who was he anyway? That chap last night. I didn't much like his hand. It looked like a frog's. I feel awful after sleeping in my clothes. I was just thinking how nice it was not to have to get dressed. Or wash, I suppose. <laughs> to the birds. I wonder where the thingamy's got to. The marsh wiggle. Hello. That must be him over there. I suppose we'd better go and speak to him. Good morning, guests. I say good, but it'll probably turn to rain, or maybe snow, or fog, or thunder. I dare say you didn't get any sleep. But we did. We had a very restful night. Ah, I see you're trying to make the best of a bad job. We had a very restful night. Excuse me, but we didn't quite catch your name. My name is Puddle Glum. You're sure to forget it. I was just trying to catch a few eels to make an eel stew. Though I suppose I won't get any and you wouldn't like it if I do. Why not? Boy, it's against reason that you should like our victuals. All the same, if you two could try to light the fire, no harm in trying. Though, of course, the wood will be wet. Where shall we light it? Hmm? Where shall we light it? Ah. 
You could light it in the wigwam, but then we'd all get smoke in our eyes. Or you could light it outside, and then the rain would come down and, and put it out. There's my tinderbox, except you won't know how to use it. I'm not completely useless. You see, you did catch the meals. A dozen of them, in fact. Oh, yes, but they'd be very tough, you'll see. I think you should tell me your plans. All we want to know is can you really help us to find Prince Rillian? Well, I don't know if you'd call it help. We're not likely to get very far on a journey up north, not at this time of the year, with winter coming on. But don't let that worry you. What, with enemies and mountains and rivers to cross and losing our way, and almost nothing to eat and sore feet, we'll hardly notice the weather. We? Are you coming with us? Of course. I don't expect I'll ever see the king back in Narnia now that he set off for foreign parts. And he had a nasty cough when he left, and... Trumpkin's old and failing fast, and we'll have a bad harvest after this drow, dry summer, and I shouldn't wonder if some enemy attacked the country, so all in all... You may as well come with us. Mm. But where shall we start? We've got to start by finding the ruined city of the giants. Aslan said so. Got to start by finding it, have we? Yes. Aren't we allowed to start by looking for it? <gasps> That's what I meant, of course. And then when we found it, we can... Ah, yes. When? Oh, isn't the stew ready yet? Ready it might be. Thank you. But you're not going to like it. Delicious! It's the best stew I've ever tasted in my life. Yeah, so... Might taste all right, but beware of collywobbles in the tummy. Food for wiggles is poison for humans. Where were we? Doesn't anybody know where the ruined city is? I don't know about anybody, but if I were looking for the ruined city, I wouldn't start from here. Where would you start from? Ettins Moor. But can't we get to Ettins Moor from here? Yes, of course. See those hills and that bit of a cliff over there where the dragon's flying, bound to meet some of those brutes? Well, those hills are the beginnings of Ettinsmoor, but there's a river between it and us. No bridges, of course. Perhaps on Ettinsmoor we shall meet people who can tell us the way. Meet people? Oh, yes, you're right about that. What sort of people live there? Oh, I suppose they're all right in their own way. Yes, but what kind of people live there? Kind is one thing they're not. You'll see. Now look here! I don't believe the whole thing could be half as bad as you're making out. Just as the beds in the wigwam were hard, or the firewood was wet. I don't think Aslan would ever have sent us here if there was as little chance as all that. That's it, boy! Put a brave face on it! All we have to worry about is our tempers. And all our hard times we're going to have to go through together. Won't do to lose our tempers, you know. Otherwise, we'll finish up knifing each other. I shouldn't wonder. Well, if you think it's as useless as all that, you can stay behind. Paul and I will go alone. Don't be such an idiot, Scrub! No, no. I'm coming. Sure and certain. I'm not going to lose an opportunity like this. It'll do me good. You see. The other marsh wiggles think I'm too flighty. Flighty? I don't take life seriously enough. They think I'm too full of bobbins and bounce. Life's not all eel pie and fricasseed frogs, they say. I need something to, to, to sober me down. So a job like this, a journey up north, looking for a prince who probably won't be there by way of a ruined city that nobody's ever seen. Just a thing. If that doesn't steady a chap, what will? I shouldn't eat any more of that if I were you. Poison for humans. I won't have any more, thank you, Puddleworm. Not because I think it will do me any harm, but because I've had enough already. And I really couldn't eat another thing. Right, let's get ready. We'll leave bacon, what's left of the stew, not much, I'm afraid, and biscuits. Weapons? You have a sword, I have a sword, and you and I, boy, will have a bow and arrows. Pole can carry a knife. I don't see why I shouldn't have a bow and arrows, too. 
What's the matter? You have a knife. I don't want a knife. I want a bow and arrow. No, stop complaining. You have a knife. I'm not complaining. I want a bow and no, arrow. there's only two bows and arrows. There's no difference between you and ah, me. Ah, quarrelling already? That's what happens on adventures. Right. Let's get packed. And then we're off. Live up there. Giant! I thought the owls would have told you. Cheer up, Hope. Some giants in Narnia are friendly. Are these at peace or at war? At peace, officially. But they were badly beaten in several savage battles, and now they have to pay tribute. Makes them rather irritable. I don't like the sound of irritable giants. Oh, come on. Maybe if we keep very quiet, it'll go away. No, no! Two about dragons. Yes, but you don't know everything. But now we can move on in peace. When we heard about the ruined city, I think we imagined that the giants were dead. Oh, no, no, that's a long way ahead. The giants of Ettingsmoor are a different race and very much alive. We seem to be getting closer to that gorge. Yes, we are, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Funny rocks. Hmm? If you came along here when it was half dark, you might really believe those piles of rocks were giants. No, no. Look! There! You could almost believe that thing on top is a head. And those things sticking out on either side could be ears. Stop! Keep looking! Keep straight ahead! Don't look at them! Do not look at them! <laughs> 
Whatever you do, don't drop. You've seen us! One of those rocks hits us. Oh, it's flattened! Oh! Oh, there's no shelter! We died! Don't panic! I should wonder if we don't have snow soon. Then we're sure to get lost. Best look on the bright side. Oh, come Best on. look on the bright side. Back to back. That's how to keep each other warm. Whose back will you lie against, Puddle Glum? My own. It's still jolly cold. I know how you can make yourself feel warmer. How? By thinking about how much colder it'll be when you go further north. It doesn't work. Uh, what are you muttering about? The signs. I'm saying the signs. Two. Journey north until you come to the ruined city of the giants. I bet you don't remember three. You're the one who had to remember them. Not fair. Puddle Glum, is that fair? <sighs> when you find writing on a stone, do what that writing tells you to do. When you find writing on a stone, do what that writing tells you to do. When you find 
mind writing on a stone. Do what that writing tells you to do. Steady, steady. Scrub hay time. Oh, be quiet, will you? Is this really the only way? To climb all the way down there and all the way up the other side? Can't do that. It's too dangerous. Oh, there is a bright side. If we break our necks getting down the cliff, at least we won't have to worry about being drowned oh. in the river. A giant's bridge. Could be a trap. Could be a trap. You've got to look out for enchantment in a place like this. That could just turn to mist and melt away. Just when we're out in the middle of it. Don't be such a wet blanket. Why shouldn't it be a proper bridge? Do you think any of the giants we've met would have had the brains to build a bridge like that? But it could have been built by really clever giants. What? But it could have been built by really clever giants. In fact, the very kind we're looking for. And that would mean we're on the right track. The old bridge leading to the old city. That's a real brainwave pole. It must be that. Puddle gum. <laughs> Up that slope. These steps are a bit steep. I'll tell you something. I know. If we break our necks slipping backwards, we won't break them slipping down the other side. Yes? Oh, come on. Eighteen's Moor is behind us. We face the great northern plain ahead. Look! Someone coming! Now be careful. Anybody we meet in this place is likely to be an enemy. Mustn't let them think we're afraid. Huh? And whatever you do, don't tell them anything. <sighs> At least they're not giants. Why, good day to you, travellers. Some of you are very young pilgrims to be walking this rough waste. We're looking for the ruined city of the giant. The ruined city? That is a strange place to be seeking. What will you do if you find it? Begging your pardon, ma'am, uh, we don't know you uh, or your friend, your silent friend, and uh, we'd rather uh, we'd rather not discuss our business with strangers. Do you, do you think we'll have a little rain soon? <laughs> well, children, you have a wise, solemn guide with you. And I think none the worse for him for keeping his own counsel. But I shall be free with mine. I have often heard of the giant city ruinous, but have never met anyone who would tell me the way to it. But this road leads eventually to the castle at Harfang, and in Harfang you will find the gentle giants 
who are as mild, civil, prudent, and courteous as the giants of Etchinsmoor are foolish, savage, and stupid. And shall we there hear tidings of the city ruinous? I know not, but certainly you will find good lodgings and merry hosts. There you shall have hot, steaming baths and soft beds, and the baked and the sweet will be on your table four times a day. Think of sleeping in a bed again, oh, and of hot baths. But do you think they'll ask us to stay? We don't know them, you see. Only tell them the chi of the green cattle salutes them and has sent them two fair southern children for the autumn feast. That's really kind of you. Thank you, thank you very much. But have a care. On whatever day you reach Harfang, come not to the door too late. For they shut their gates a few hours after noon and open to none once they have drawn the boat. Fare thee well. And I mean that, children. May you farewell. What a lovely horse. And that beautiful green dress. Come on. Good deal to know where she came from and where she's going to. Up to no good, I shouldn't wonder. I thought she was super. I hope this half fan place is not far. All the same, I wish we knew a bit more about her. I wanted to ask her all about herself. But how could I when you wouldn't tell her anything about us? Yes, and why were you so unpleasant to them? Then? I only saw one. Didn't you see the knight? I saw a suit of armour. Why didn't he speak? I expect he was shy. <laughs> I wonder what you'd really see if you lifted up the visor of that helmet and looked inside. Oh, hang it all. What else could be inside except a man? A skeleton? Or maybe nothing at all, or nothing you could see. Invisible. Puddle Glum, you do have the most horrible ideas. You're always expecting the worst, and you're always wrong. Let's think about those gentle giants. Go as quickly as we can to Harfang. Ooh. I don't think we should go to Harfang. Not safe. Oh, really? Besides, I don't know what a gentle giant is, and Aslan signs made no mention of staying with giants, gentle or otherwise. Now, look here. We're sick of the wind and the rain and sleeping on cold, hard earth. We want to enjoy a bit of warmth and comfort. Now, we know you're supposed to be our guide, but if you won't come with us, then we'll have to... We'll... Well, then, we will go to... Harfang, but on one condition. You must both give me an absolute promise that you won't tell the giants that we come from Narnia, and you definitely won't tell anyone we're looking for Prince Rillian. Shh. All right, we agree. Promise? All right, all right, we promise. Both of you. Both of us promise. Forward. A castle! It must be hot. Hot bath tonight. Oh, yes. Wouldn't be too sure. It's midday. We're closing the city gates soon. We've got to get there first. Well, hurry! Both 
legs broken, I shouldn't wonder. I'm perfectly all right, thank you. But you'll have to help me out. Wait a sec. It's not just a hole. It's too regular. It's kind of trench. Or a lane. And running due north. If it's a sort of road, we'll be out of the wind. At least I'm out of the wind. What happens further on? I'll have a look. You be careful, Pole. Might lead to a dragon's den. And remember, it's giant country. It'll be full of giant worms or giant beetles, I'll be bound. Where does that go to? Nowhere much. What do you mean, nowhere much? She's in a dead funk. I'll have a look. Steady, boy. Sure of those signs, Poe? Oh, bother the signs. What signs are we supposed to be after now? Oh, something about someone saying Aslan's name. I'm too cold to give a recitation here. That's not the next one. Didn't Aslan's name come later? Got the signs mixed up, I shouldn't wonder. Haven't you noticed how, how regular some of these shapes are? Something in the signs, I shouldn't wonder. Never you say that, it means something gloomy, so please stop. Is this the time for stopping to admire the view? For goodness sake, let's get on! It's getting dark. I think we should think of making camp here. Look, look! Half -man. Yes, well, it's all oh, very well. Oh, shut up! We haven't a moment to lose. Don't you remember what the lady said about their locking up so early? We must get there in time. We must, we must! We'll die if we shut out in weather like this. Well, it's not exactly... Oh, come yet. on! Not yet, isn't it? Hurry, Puddle Glum! Steady. Leave this to me. Whatever you do, don't look frightened. You've done the silliest thing in the world coming here at all. But now that we are here, we must put a bold face on it. That marsh with him may be a wet blanket. He certainly has plenty of pluck and cheek. Oh, there! Porter! Guests seeking lodgings for the night. Don't look frightened. What kind of creature do you call yourself? I'm a marsh wiggle. Please, sir. We're two southern children, and this is Mr. Puddleglum. And the Lady of the Green Kirtle salutes the King of the Gentle Giants. And she sent us to your autumn feast. If it's convenient, that is. <laughs> Well, that's different, that is. The autumn feast. <laughs> well, you best come into the lodge while I'm sending word to His Majesty. Blue faces. I didn't know they were that colour. I don't care for it myself, but I dare say you look quite nice to each other. Our faces are only blue with cold. We're not this colour, really. You best come in, then, and get warm. Come in. Come in, you little shrimps. Come on then, come on in. That's it. Go on, get yourselves by the fire. Get yourselves warm, that's it. <laughs> now then, lad, you run over to the house with this message. <laughs>
please, we're very hungry. You'll catch your little soon enough. Don't you worry. Now then, Froggy. I think you look as if you need cheering up. Here we are. That's a bit heavy for you. A cup or a glass would drown you there. I know. Here we are. Too. But then it might at the first sip. Ooh. There'll be something nasty at the bottom, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> That'll be a test, you see. If I suddenly curl up or burst into flames or <laughs> turn into a marsh wiggle or a lizard, you all know not to accept anything they offer. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Froggy, you're a man. Did you see him put it away? <laughs> not a man. Not a frog. A marsh wiggle. <laughs> to go to the front room at once. Respectable. Marsh wiggle, respectable. Very respectable. <laughs> <laughs> Show him the way then, young un. Now that's for Froggy there. I think you'd better carry him. He's had a drop or two more that's good for him. Pull me up, pull me down, pull me down, pull me down. Still. Not a frog, not a frog. Why are you Please, sire, the Lady of the Green Kirtle salutes you by us and said you'd like to have us for your autumn feast. Hmm, what good little children! Quite excellent children indeed. Welcome to our court. Give me your hair. What is that? Respect her, Diggle. Oh, the horrid thing! It's alive! He's all right, really, Your Majesty. You'll get to like him once you know him. Know him? That thing? Oh, the poor little child out in the snow all day. Take them away. Give them food and drink and baths. Give her lollipops. Give her dolls and possets and comforts. And lullabies and lovely, cuddly toys. Oh, I'm not that little. Now, little girl, don't cry, or you won't be good for anything when the feast comes. Oh! The autumn feast. Sweet little things. Now you've had a good dinner and a lovely hot bath, you should sleep like a trout, my poppet. <laughs> and when you wake tomorrow, your clothes will be washed, ironed, and all laid out with everything a sweet little girl could ever want to play with. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no! Tell me the 
signs, child. No! Tell me the signs. Happens if you cannot remember. Tell me the signs. The signs we won't know how to find Prince Willy. If we get back to our own world, we'll be stranded here. Aslan, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Please, please forgive me. Tell me the signs. Please forgive me. Please. Do you know what happens if you cannot remember Please the signs? Me. Sorry. Child. Please. Is pretty Poppet's friends come to play with her? <laughs> there you are, dears. <laughs> and there you are, my pretty little one. <laughs> no need to tell you to be good, because you're such a sweet little thing. In fact, so good, it almost seems that... <laughs> I slept and slept. I feel so much better. Do you? I do. Mm. But Padogon has a hangover. I mean a headache. Look, a window seat. We'll be able to see right out. came and was terribly angry with me because I hadn't remembered the signs. Look, look. There were the words. Under me. Under me? What can that mean? Under me.
city under me. The second and third signs muffed. That's the ruined city, all right. We must have walked right over it in the snowstorm. It's my fault. I'd given up repeating the signs. I've been thinking about them. I could have seen it was a city, even in all that snow. I'm worse. I did see, or partly. I had a feeling we ought to stop. The truth is, we were so keen on getting to this place, ever since we met that woman with the Black Knight, we would nearly forgotten about Prince William. I shouldn't wonder if that isn't exactly what she intended. What I don't understand is how could we miss anything as big and clear as those letters? We didn't. You fell into it. Into the E of me. That was the trench with its three side passages. It's clear that the green lady making you think of hot food and hot water was to make you forget about everything else. Aslan was right to be angry with me. I should have remembered the signs. What are they? What are they? Hang on. You told them to me. I ought to be able to remember them. First, journey north. Well, we've done that. It's my fault. It's all my fault. Oh, Aslan. To journey north until you come to the ruined city of the ancient giants. Three, when you find writing on a stone, do what the writing tells you to do. Oh, but... He always goes just when I want him to explain. Well, the writing says under me. It doesn't make much sense. Yes, it does, though. It means that we've... Got to look for Prince William under that ruined city. But how? Mm, that's another question. Well, we shall just have to go back, I suppose. If we can see the ruined city from here, it can't be far. There's no point in hanging around for the blessed autumn feast. Let's go now. Haven't you had any breakfast? Oh, yes. Why we're trapped in here? Oh, come down, scrub. You're never going to manage it. Anyway, do you think the giants really meant to make us their prisoner? Well, whether they did or not, that's what we are. We'll never get out of here. I shouldn't wonder. Except. We don't know if we are their prisoners. It's not their fault that everything's too big for us. The important thing is to have a strategy. If we do get out of here, what do we do next? Get back to the ruins, stupid. We just a minute ago said so. We have to get out of Hartfang first. Well, it's clear we won't escape by night. Once we're in our rooms and the door's shut, we can't get out. And if we try to escape in daylight, we'll be seen. Oh, dear. Afternoon could still be the best time. When they're dozy after their midday meal. Ooh. Good idea, Paul. Above all, we must be merry and bright. You two youngsters are not always in high spirits, you know. You must watch me. I'll be ever so merry. Merry and frolicsome. Frolicsome, yeah. You think I'm a funny fellow already in there. You know, you two thought I was rather tipsy last night, didn't you? No. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, no. Well, I do assure you it was. Most of it was. Uh, put on, I thought it might come in handy. Anyway, we must appear to be happy here so the giants won't suspect that we're plotting to escape. And we'd better keep our eyes open and learn as much as we can about this place and how we are to escape from it. That is, if we ever do escape. <sighs> Now, my poppets, you must come and see the king and queen and all the court setting out on the hunt. Oh, it's such a pretty sight. <laughs> come along. Come along. <laughs> I 
Now come along. Come along. Seems we're not prisoners by day anyway. Oh, they're really friendly. Maybe we've nothing to fear after all. Riding, they're walking. Well, can you imagine any horses big enough to carry that lot? I can't imagine that queen walking. She's going to be around the palace all day. What chance of we... Shh! Here she is. Down! Oh, no. He's being merry and bright. You go into your act. Oh, Your Majesty, you're not going away, are you? You will be back soon. But of course, my dear. We must be here for the autumn feast tomorrow night. <laughs> we shall be back this evening. We're so longing for tomorrow night, and we do love being here. We do love being here. And while you're out, we may run over the whole castle and see everything, mayn't we? So say yes, and we may come to the feast. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> You'll be there, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Onward! <laughs> Now I've work to do, my puppets. I hope you can amuse yourselves. With the Queen's permission, we're going to explore the castle. Why, of course. You must feel at home, little ones, for the short time you're with us. There you are. They don't mean to keep us their prisoner. They are so sweet at that age. It does seem such a pity that... Good. Oh, thank you. Everyone's so nice. Just doing our job, dear. I can hardly wait for the feast. I wonder what I should wear. I will be allowed to stay up for it, won't I? You will. You certainly will. I wish it was tomorrow night already. I do hope the time goes quickly. Poor little thing. We are thinking about Go get that piece of at once. What is happening? Get all that stick there. Get those carrots done quickly. Death of me. Are you preparing for the feast tomorrow night? We are, young man. Oh, how exciting. What's that? Oh, it smells lovely. May I try it? Why not? You're a growing child. We must fatten you up. That's useful to know. Why? We could slip straight out without having to cross the courtyard. Come on, Puddle Glum. Mmm. It's delicious. It's going to be a wonderful feast. I am looking forward to it. Now that's enough, young lady. Otherwise you'll spoil your lunch. I've never tasted 
eaten venison before? Isn't it scrumptious? All right, Paul, you don't have to overdo it with us. She's very good. They all love her. I've tried to be friendly, but... Ah, uh, well, girls always do that sort of thing better than boys. Even boys do it better than marsh wizzles. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh, another nice tender haunch of venison for you. That stag was lying then. When he was caught, he said, don't kill me. You won't enjoy me. I'm terribly tough. <laughs> <laughs> Not another bite. We've been eating a talking stag. But it's awful to think animals being killed at all for us to eat. But I suppose to them, if the animals here do talk, then... Oh, dear. She doesn't understand. You've never lived here before, Poe. Some of my closest friends were talking animals. Well, I suppose so, but we have to eat. Brought down the anger of Aslan. That's what comes of not attending the signs. I'm not too keen on those gentle giants. We've got to make our break this afternoon. Hurry up with those turkeys. I'm not so sure afternoon is the best time. But it is. seen in the daylight, we can always say we're out for a walk. Which they wouldn't believe if they found us getting out at night. Don't worry, Paul, we'll manage. Leave that hatch door open so the cat can go in and out. Poor thing. Well, that's that done then. Kettle's in its place. That'll make a nice little cup of tea later. First, I shall have a little sit down. I might even have 40 winks. As long as that hunting party doesn't come back too soon wanting this and that. When do they usually come back? There's no telling with them. Oh, look, do be quiet and sit down for a bit, dearies. bird can be cooked in a variety of ways. A giant cookbook. I wonder what giants eat. Man, this elegant little biped has long been valued as a delicacy. It forms a traditional part of the autumn feast and is served between the fish and the joint. Oh, Eustace, paddle come up here quick. Marshwiggle! Some authorities think this animal unfit for giant's consumption because of its stringy consistency and muddy flavour. Oh, is that nice? Is that nice? I would have thought. Well, I would have thought. I would have thought it would taste very nice. We have it. Most 
Davis bit still ahead. Remember, we're out for a walk. The moment we look like people running away, we're done for. It's closed room. We must be visible for miles. We are. We are. <gasps> What's that? It's them. Keep walking. Keep walking. Release the hounds! Before there'll be no more lives for me! I still had my tinder box. It would come in handy here. Yeah? Yes, where did you have it last? I was trying to remember. I had it when I gave you the eel stew. And then... I thought it was when the dog chased us into the cave. You might be right, dear. Yeah. Oh, stop it, you two! What difference does it make where he lost it? He lost it. We're in the earth, hundreds of feet below the ground. This time I can't see how we're ever going to get out. I can't see anything. Oh, I'm terribly thirsty. So, what make you here, creatures of the overworld? Who is it? Who's there? I am the warden of the underworld. And with me stands a band of under-earthmen, fully armed. So, quickly, tell me now who you are and what is your purpose here in the deep realm. Well, a band of men sounds very grand, but in this light, how do we know whether you're bluffing or not? You might only have two. Or one. Now, dear. Those chaps don't teach me to take a serious view of life. I don't know what will. Did you ever see such sorrowful countenances? Shh. So now answer my question. Why have you come here to the deep realm? We fell down by accident. Many fall down and few return to the sunlit lands. Make you ready now to come with me to the queen of the deep realm. What would 
she want with us? I know not, young insolence. Her will is not to be questioned but obeyed. Well, stand up. Underground. She hates being in dark, closed up spaces like you this. Must go on. I, I tell you what, Cole. I'll go first, and, and you can hold on to my heels. And Scrub can go behind you, and he'll hold on to your heels. And that way it won't be too bad. Hmm? I felt just like you do up on that cliff top when we first came here, Paul. Come on, you must try. There is one good thing about being underground. What's that? You don't get any rain. No. that old fellow that is old father time who was once a king in overland now he has sunk down into the deep realm and dreams of all the things that are done in the world above they say he will awake when at the end of the world many sink down and few return to the sunlit lands find water soon. you're taking us to? Person, impious child. She's the queen of all this vast underworld. So, creatures of the overworld, go on board, move! I'm not going anywhere under her banner! Insolence! She is the queen and must be obeyed without question. Come!
never get back to our own world. We're buried here as deep as deep in the earth. Steady, Paul. But we're doing very well. Don't you remember? We were to go under the ruined city. Well, we have done. We most certainly are under it. And that means we're following Aslan's instructions again. Warden! <coughs> uh, uh, Mr. Warden? My name is Malakadaram. Mr. Warden, have many others, have any others from our land up atop done this trip? Many have come down. I know, and, and few, few have returned, returned to the sunlit land. worse, at least if they don't taste of anything, they can't taste terrible. I think they're rather nice. Feels like we've been on this boat forever. So we've been underground forever. I hardly remember what the sun looks like. Mm, for a bit of blue sky. Could we play a game or something to fill up the time? I can think of a game. Remembering the signs. Well, yes. As you said, three was to do what was written in the stones. And we did. We came down here. Four. What's four? The first and only person on our trip. To ask us to do something in the name of Aslan must be obeyed. Not that we're likely to meet any such person down here.
and few return to their sunlit land. It's our kind of light. Not all blue and dismal. No, no, I tell you. The Queen has gone away on some great affair. The only thing to be done with these top dwellers is to... What? Is that you up there, old Malagathron? Who have you there? Strangers, sire. Creatures of the overworld. Overworlders? Bring them down to me this instant. May it please your highness to remember that the Queen... Pleases my highness principally to be obeyed, old Matara. Bring them down! Welcome, Overworlders. Welcome to the Next day, I cry your mercy. I've seen you two children and your strange governor before. Was it not you three that met me on the borders of Ettingsmore when I rode there by my lady's side? You mean you were the Black Knight who never spoke? I was. And that lady is the queen of this underworld? What did she think she was doing? Sending us off to a castle of giants to be eaten for dinner. We never did her any harm. How dare you speak so of the Queen, insolent boy! Prepare yourself for death. Yeah. He's only a kid. Do you want to die instead? Not especially. But if it's a choice between me and a child, you'd better kill me. <laughs> That's well spoken. If you boy were not so young a warrior, you and I would have fought on this. For I will hear no word against my lady's honor. Whatever she said to you, be assured it was of good intent. It couldn't have been. She must have known. Silence! She's a nosegay of all virtues. But you shall know and love her hereafter. Meanwhile... Is your errand in the deep lands? Please, we are trying to find Prince Rillian of Narnia. Rillian? Narnia? Strange names. Narnia, what land is that? I've never heard the name before. It must be a thousand leagues from those parts of the overworld that I know. What a strange fantasy to come searching for, how do you call him? Billion? Trillion? In my lady's realm. To my certain knowledge, there's never been such a man here. We've been told to look for a message on the stones of the city ruinous. And we saw the words, under me. And under it is here, more or less. You are the more deceived. My lady could have given you better counsel had you had the sense to ask her. Those words are all that is left of a longer script from ancient times, which, as she well remembers, expresses this verse. Though under earth and throneless now I be, yet while I lived, all earth was under. must know that I'm a man under a most strange affliction. 
My lady, the queen, has said that none may see my face until the bewitchment is broken. Oh, there, guards! Bring wine and up to us food for my guests. Please be seated, gentlemen. You must understand, my friends, that I know nothing of who I am or who I was in my past life. I remember no time when I was not dwelling at the court of this queen. But my thought is that she brought me hither to save me from the evil enchantment. An empty cup, Frogfoot, suffer me to refill it. Queen and I ride sometimes in the overworld to accustom my eyes to the sunlight. But I must go with my visor down and may never speak, lest the spell be broken. But what is this evil enchantment you're under? I know not. Only that at a certain time every evening I become a changed man. I grow in fury and rage. And would kill even my dearest friend if he came close to me. And that is a spell with all the marks of a witch upon it. But by Her Majesty's art, I shall be free from this accursed mask and the bewitchment the moment she has made me king of that land and given me her hand in marriage in the overworld above. As a matter of interest, where is the queen now? <laughs> very place. Inspecting the diggings. Soon, a thin roof of earth will be broken through. And with her to guide me, and a thousand under earth men at my back, I shall ride forth in arms, slay my enemy's chief men, and doubtless be their crowned king within four and twenty hours. A bit rough luck on them, isn't it? Thou art a lad of wondrous, quick working wit. For on my honor, I'd never thought of it so before. I see your meaning. Isn't it comical to think of all of them going about their business and never dreaming that under their peaceful fields and floors, only a fathom down, is a great army about to break out upon them like a fountain? <laughs> I don't think it's funny at all. You sound to me as though you'll be a wicked tyrant. What? Is the little maid a deep politician? Never fear, sweet one. I shall rule that land by the counsel of my lady, who will then be my queen too. Her word will be my law. shame that you should see me. Yet I dread to be left alone. What is to happen?
Tower. threatened us, and the moment they see us, well... The guards! Go through yonder door, it leads to my private apartments, and there await my coming to you once my sufferings are over. Go back to him. No. I'd rather not. I've been committed. I'm sure that queen's a witch and an enemy. There's a strong, strong smell of danger and magic and lies and treason. We need to know everything that's going on. I vote we go back. and goes and is not yet fully upon me. Make no noise, for I told that prying warden that you were in bed. Listen while I am still master of myself. When the fit is upon me, I shall beg and implore you, entreat and threaten you to loosen my bonds. They tell me that that is what I do. I shall call upon you by all that is most dear and most dreadful, but do not listen to me. Harden your hearts, stop your ears, for while I am bound, you are safe. If once I were up and out of this chair, I'd be transformed into a serpent and would kill you. Never fear. We have no desire to do battle with serpents. But be careful. There's no knowing what I will say to catch you off your guard. You promise, you swear that whatever I say I'll ask you, do not release me from my bonds. I should jolly well think not. Nevertheless, we must be cautious. They'll be coming, I shouldn't wonder.
I'm sane now. Every night I'm sane, and it is the only time that I am. If only I could get out of this enchanted chair. My sanity would last. I'd be a man again, myself again. But every night they bind me, every night my chance is gone. You are not my enemies. Please, quickly cut my bonds. Please, I beseech you. Have they told you that if I am released I shall go berserk and kill you? See by your faces that they have. It is a lie. Is it at this hour that I am in my right mind? All the rest of the day I am bewitched. You are not witches. You are not underworld men. Of your courtesy, cut my bonds. I hope they're safe. You have hearts of stone. You look upon a wretch that has suffered almost more than any mortal can bear. The hours are slipping by. Save me now. When these hours have passed, I shall be witless again. The toy of that most devilish sorceress. And this night of all nights, when she is away, you, you take me from a chance that may never come again. Someone surely must have sent you me to the stars. No! Oh. Uh, uh. Stayed in the other room until it was all over. Help me. Help me and give me my sword. Not on your life. Once I am free, I shall take such revenge on this queen and her people that they'll talk of it for a thousand years. I did break my bonds. The witch was here to stop me. You will not have her to help me tonight. Free me now. And I'm your friend. I'm your mortal enemy, else. So for all, I beg you to set me free. By all fears, by all loves, by the bright skies of Overland, by the great lion, by Aslan himself, set me free. Oh no. Oh dear. It's the sign. No, it's the words of the sign. What shall we do? Would Aslan really have meant us to... to unbind a savage lunatic? If only we knew. I think we do know. Aslan didn't tell Pole what would happen if she followed the signs. He simply told her what she had to do. This fellow might be the death of us if we lose him. But that doesn't let us off following Aslan signs.
lie there in ruin, vile engine of sorcery, lest your mistress should use you upon another victim. What? Do I see a marsh wiggle? A real, live, honest Narnian marsh wiggle? Then you have heard of Narnia. You may well believe it, for I am Rillian, Prince of Narnia. Oh, Your Royal Highness. Oh, we have come for no other reason but to seek and to deliver you. Who are my other rescuers? I'm Eustace. I've heard my father speak of you. And I'm Pole, Jill Pole. I owe all three of you a greater debt than I can ever repay. But tell me, my father, he is well. He still lives. He lives, my lord, but is old and frail. Excuse me, but shouldn't we be going? We must use cunning for that! you three has dared to destroy the silver chair. I did. Ah. And these my true friends have helped to deliver me. We do it again too. <laughs> and in this madness, who do you now think you are? I am Prince Rillian. <laughs> Only child of Caspian, tenth of that name, King of Narnia. Leave us!
Have we not planned together that you will advance at the head of my army and... Make myself king of some unfortunate nation that never did me wrong. Murdering their natural lords and holding their throne for you as a foreign and bloody tyrant. Now that I do know myself, I utterly renounce that plan as plain villainy. Now, will you give us conduct out of your realm? to have lived there all my life. Indeed. Tell me, I pray you, where that country is. It's up there. I don't know exactly where. Up there? Is there a country hidden in the roof? No. It's where you here call the other world. this overworld? Don't be silly, as if you didn't know. It's up above, where you can see the sky and the stars and the sun. Why, well, you've been there yourself. We met you there. I met you. <laughs> we often meet our friends in strange places when we dream. But unless all dream alike, you must not ask others to remember it. <laughs> Madam, I've already told your grace that I am the son of the King of Narnia. And shalt be king of many imagined lands in thy fancies. <laughs> We've been there too. Oh. And I suppose thou art Queen of Narnia. Pretty one. <laughs> oh, nothing of the sort. We come from another world. That other world is all a dream. All a dream. There never was such a world. There never was such a world. There never was any world but mine. Madam, you can say what you like and still you won't make me forget Narnia. We'll never see it again, I shouldn't wonder, and you may have blotted it out and made it dark like this for all I know. But I know I was there. How do you know you were there? How? Hmm? How? How? Why? I've seen a sky full of stars. And I've seen the sun rise up out of the sea of a morning and sink beyond the distant mountains at night. And I've seen him up in the midday sky 
when I couldn't look at him for the brightness. <laughs> the blessings of Aslan upon this honest marsh wiggle. How could we have forgotten it? Of course we've all seen the sun. Sun? The sun is but the children's story. Yes, I see now. There is no sun. There is no sun. There never was the sun. There never was the sun. <laughs> There's Asla. Does. life here in this real world your life henceforth is to be here with me you will do my work now to bed with you to sleep one thing to say. Suppose, suppose we have only dreamed and made up these things like sun, sky, stars and moon and Aslan himself. In that case, it seems to me that the made up things are a good deal better than the real ones. And if this black pit of a kingdom is the best you can make. Then it's a poor world. And we four can make a dream world to lick your real one hollow. How dare you threaten me? As for me, I shall live like a Narnian. Even if there isn't any Narnia. So thanking you very much for supper. We're going to leave your court at once and make our way across your great darkness to search for our land above. Well said, Pallyvard, well done. Thanks for doing Gentlemen, I thank you. I'm avenged. For the serpent that killed my royal mother was undoubtedly the Green Lady. To think all this time I've been the slave of my mother's murderer. At last I'm free. We're not out of here yet. It won't be easy to escape, you know, no. It won't be easy. We'll probably be killed in the attempt. I know exactly how to escape this world. You know? How? We must make for the new outlets being dug for the witch's planned invasion of the overworld. How close are they to breaking through? A matter of a few feet of earth. Then with all haste, mates. Ah, your highness, your eminence. Let's away! Dangers that are ahead of us. 
Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, you. my country and my father. What is this voyage he's gone upon? In Caspian the sailed east. So the far lands were explored together when he was very young. Time is different in our world, William. To me, it's only a matter of months ago. But to him, a lifetime. What is the object of his voyage? Only, he said, to see again the places of his youth. But many believe he hoped to meet Aslan to ask who could be the next king of Narnia in case... He never expected to see me again. You're right, friend Wiggle. We must get home. Oh, look. The ceiling's getting lower. It's the diggings! the end. But it's not rock. It's earth. We can dig our way through. Oh, that's if there's anything to dig to. Is it daylight? At least let's look.
Glenfeather. Oh. I've news for you. You are to join Prince William. He has gone to Care Paravel to meet his father, the old king, whose ship arrives today. <laughs> what a to do? To loo. Well, mates, off you go. Goodbye, Puddle Glum. Sorry I ever called you a wet blanket. So am I. You've been the best friend in the world. I hope we meet again. Not much chance of that. I don't think I'll ever see my old wigwam again, either. I'm sure there have been floods and attacks by dragons while I've been away. Oh, hum. Such is life. You're a regular old humbug. You always seem as miserable as a funeral. But I believe you're perfectly happy. And he says he's afraid of everything. When really, he's as brave as a lion. Homage to Rillian, King of Narnia. Hail oh, Aslan. I'm sorry for the mess we made of things. I forgot the signs and then... And we nearly got eaten by giants. And, well... Silence. I'm not here to scold. You have done well the work I sent you to do in Narnia. Please, may we go home now? I have come to bring you home. Son of Adam, go into that thicket and pluck the thorn that you will find there. Bring it to me. Drive it into my paw. Must I? You must. can see what's bothering you. I'm no ghost. If I appeared in Narnia, I suppose I'd be a ghost. But here, in Aslan's country... Aslan? 
Can we stay? No, child. When you meet here again, then you will have come to stay. But now you must go back to your own world. But we want to see you again. And you shall, child. You mean, sir, you are there too? In our world? I am. But there I have another name. You must learn to know me by that name. That was the very reason you were brought to Narnia. That by knowing me here a little, you may know me better there. Aslan, I have always wanted to have just a glimpse of their world. Is that wrong? You cannot want wrong things now that you have died, my son. You shall see their world for a few minutes of their time. Now, draw your swords. But use only the flat, not the blade. But it is cowards and children, not warriors, you go to fight. Say goodbye, Caspian.